Welcome to Using the Text Editor in Blackboard. This is your guide to posting whenever you see the text editor box, which will be in assignments, forums, bulletin boards, wikis, and other types of content areas within Blackboard. It's a very small editor, and it's often pretty stripped down in appearance. Today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of it. The first thing we're going to talk about is the resize button. It's in the bottom right hand corner of the text editor window. It allows you to make the window taller or shorter, but not wider. You use it by grabbing it and dragging it either down or up. The Go Full Screen button is in the top right hand corner of the text editor window and it is four arrows pointing outwards. They look like a little X marks the spot. And this is a good thing to use whenever you want to look at as much of your document as possible. Warning, do not forget to minimize by clicking the button again and submitting before you leave the document. When you size this all the way up to full screen, the submit button is hidden and it's very easy to forget to submit your final document. There we are, we have a huge document to look at and then we can minimize it again and submit if we need to. Get to the full menu. The typical text box gives you one line of options from changing the font size to resizing the screen. You want more. We all want more than that. And so we're going to turn this little one line of icons into a three powerhouse line of options. In order to do this, you click the button on the far right hand corner of the text editor window at the top. It's a set of two arrows that either point up or down, and it's as simple as that. Next up, we're going to talk about inserting hyperlinks. The hyperlink icons are either a pair of chain links together to insert a hyperlink or a set of what looks like chain links breaking apart. And it's in the second row of icons towards the end third of the icon row. In this top image, you see that I have typed some text into the window. The text is, I'm going to link to this amazing thing. What's interesting is, is that the hyperlinks are not active. They're grayed out. Hyperlinks can only be added when some text is selected. And so now I've written, I'm going to link to this amazing thing. And I selected the text amazing thing. And now the hyperlink is available for us to use. Here I'm highlighting amazing thing. This is where the hyperlink will appear. Then I click the hyperlink, I get a new menu and I type in my link path. So you have to know the link path you want to link to. And I'm choosing to link to USC. I'm going to put a title for this link in, USC. This is the title for the link, not the text for the link. The text is still amazing thing. If we were to preview that, we would get, I'm going to link to this amazing thing and when you click on Amazing Thing, poop, the web page for USC comes up. Removing a hyperlink is nearly identical to adding it. You select the text with the hyperlink and you simply click the broken link and your hyperlink is gone. Inserting images into your text area is a little cumbersome, but not horrific. Unlike text, you simply can't copy and paste it here. You have to insert it using the insert image dialog. 
The insert image icon is on the th third row of icons at the bottom, three icons in. It looks like a little mountain with a sun rising over it. Once you click it, a new dialog opens and you select the image you want. Usually it's on your computer. You open that image. Then you give it an image description that somebody who is visually impaired might need when they're looking at the image. I plumped out for this one and went for dogs. And then you need a title, and this is what will appear when your mouse hovers over the image. And I chose Jack Russell Terrier. Once you insert it, boop, there's a little picture of your Jack Russell Terrier. And he looks great in that tiny, tiny text editing window. Now let's talk about the preview icon. The preview icon lets you see what your submission will look like after you've submitted it. You can check to see if your links work. You can check to see if your images show up like you think, if your videos work, things along that line. It's on the far right hand corner of the top side of the screen and it looks like a video monitor with a shadow on it. If we click this with our Jack Russell in there, we have a little preview of our Jack Russell Terrier, and he looks pretty awesome. If you start inserting images, you start might start feeling pretty confident about your abilities and think, I'm going to insert a YouTube video. Well, if you're gonna do that, do not use the obvious YouTube logo on the third line down, the first icon that looks exactly like the YouTube logo because it's a trap. In order to do this, you need to have an account in YouTube, have uploaded your own videos, and be able to account, connect that account to Blackboard. It's not impossible. Some people can do this, however, even somebody like me makes the decision to use the easier option. Hop on over to that mashups icon. It's got, it's a few more icons over, four different colors and the words mashups. You can see that you can submit a few different types of things into your editor. I've always used this for YouTube videos. So once we go into mashups, you select YouTube, it opens the YouTube video. The only trick is you have to know enough about the name or the identity of the video to find it. Once you search for it, you select it and submit. And bam, now we have a picture of a Jack Russell and a video of a Jack Russell. We are ready to rock. There is a third place and way to submit videos into the Blackboard text editor. And it's the fourth icon in on the bottom row. And it looks like an arrow in a set of film. And it's not your friend. Number one, you need specialty knowledge related to video encoding. A lot of us have it, that's wonderful, but you have that and time to check your video on multiple platforms and browsers. If the answer to either of these questions is no, then this button is not your friend. Now, sometimes when you're working in the text editor, you find out that the text is not formatted the way you want. You can't reformat it. The formats don't apply the way you think they should. And often this happens if you paste it from a Word document, which is something I recommend people do. Do their work in a Word document. That way, if the internet goes down, you don't lose your work. So you paste it over into the text editor, and then it looks completely different, and nothing you do fixes it. 
I'll show you why that is in a moment. Um, the important thing is to know about the eraser at the end of the top right hand line of icons. And that is the remove formatting button. This takes out all of the weird HTML formatting, any Java that's in there, any applied CSS styles, anything like that, so that you can then edit the document and make it look the way you want. So here I pasted some text from a web page. Look at all this junk. You'd never be able to fix this. So all we do is highlight everything we want to fix and then click the remove formatting and it takes us to the base formatting here. That is all you need to know to begin editing content successfully in Blackboard.